بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم کلسم شیر اینڈ آئی ہیو بین ورکنگ ایز این اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر آف انگلش ایٹ گورنمنٹ گرلس ڈگری کالج سکھر انڈر دا سیج گائیڈنس آف اوور میریٹوریس پرنسپل پروفیسر میڈم شمیم اختر جسکانی مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے آئی ایم اسپیکنگ ٹو یو آن دا بہاف آف سن کالج لیکچرس یوٹیوب چینل دیٹ ہیز بین لانچڈ بائی کالج ایجوکیشن ڈپارٹمنٹ گورمنٹ آف سن ریئلی اٹس اے ہائیلی ایڈمائرابل ایکٹ ٹیکن ٹو فیسلیٹیٹ دا اسٹوڈینٹس ڈیورنگ دا کرنٹ چیلنج فیسنگ سچویشن کووڈ نائنٹین So the dear students, the topic of my today's lecture is the poem, The Solitary Reaper, composed by William Wordsworth. It is taken from Intermediate Book, Selections from English Verses, Part 2. So for the today's lecture, my teaching plan is introduction to the poet introduction to the poem theme of the poem explanation and evaluation stanza wise form of the poem literary devices and in the end conclusion first of all introduction of the poet William Wordsworth was born on 7th April 1770 in Cockermouth Cumberland in the Lake District and educated at Hawkshead Grammar School He continues his studies at Cambridge University He made his debut as a writer in 1787 when he published a sonnet in the European magazine. In 1793, he published Descriptive Sketches and an Evening Walk. These works show his lifelong love of natural beauty, but are written in a conventional and artificial style. However, during the next five years, In association with his friend S.T. Coleridge, Wordsworth developed his own original and immensely valuable theories concerning poetry and poetic style. The result was the publication of lyrical ballads. Wordsworth, as a poet of nature, stands supreme. He is a worshipper of nature and he has a complete philosophy of nature. In his eyes, nature is a teacher whose wisdom we can learn if we will and without which any human life is vain and incomplete. In his poems, nature occupies an independent status. This shining star of English poetry died on 23rd April 1850. Introduction to the poem. The poem The Solitary Reaper is a ballad by English romantic poet William Wordsworth and one of his best known works. The poem was inspired by him and his sister Dorothy's stay at the village in Scotland in September 1803. The Solitary Reaper was written by William Wordsworth in 1805 and was later published in 1807. The Solitary Reaper is 
indicative of the romantic view of the imagination. The poem's theme is the power of human imagination to see the transcendent in the everyday. Theme of the poem Everlasting beauty and sorrows are the major themes of this poem. The poem presents two things, the labor of that girl and her expressions of sorrow. She is working and singing at the same time without being bothered about her surroundings. She does not notice that the speaker is listening and enjoying her song. She just continues as if she is outpouring her heart out in the lap of nature. The speaker on the other hand seems enchanted by her song as he claims that the song's beauty is matchless. Thus, he stops and enjoys its beauty knowing it will not last forever. Now, it's turn for the explanation and evolution is stanza-wise. The poem is consist of four eight line stanzas. So there are some difficult words used in this poem, like Highland means Scotland, melancholy, sadness, well, poetic form of valley, nightingale type of bird, weary, tired, haunt, place, frequented by certain person or group. The conflict is shown here between man and nature and its concepts are curiosity, impatience, captivation and anguish. As we know that the poem is consist of four eight line stanzas. So in the first stanza from line one to eight, the poet tells us about a young girl of Scotland. He tells us to look at the girl who is reaping grand and also singing a sweet song. He advises the passerby to stop short and listen to her song or pass very silently by her so that she may not be disturbed. In second stanza from line 9 to 16, the poet compares the sweet voice of the girl to that of a nightingale. The poet says that no nightingale has so far sung as melodious as the girl sings. When some groups of tired travelers reach a shady place in the Arabian desert, the nightingale welcomes the caravans with its sweet song. The poet says that the voice of the singing girl is rather sweeter than that of a nightingale. The poet also shows comparison with cuckoo bird. He says that such a sweet voice was never heard from the cuckoo bird even in the spring season. The voice of the girl was so sweet that it broke the silence of the seas and of the far off islands on northwestern coast of Scotland. In third stanza from line 17 to 24, the poet tells us about the language of the song that he does not understand the alien language. Perhaps she is singing some sad song about the past mishap 
or she is singing about battles which have been fought in the far off past the poet guesses that she is singing a simple song on some ordinary matter or simple sorrows of loss of some misery in the last stanza irrespective of the theme of the song it seemed that the song would not come to an end in concluding lines poet admits that he listened her song standing still and motionless but as he mounted up the hill the tune of the song was so sweet that it struck the heart of the poet now form of the poem this poem is in the form of a ballad ballad a poem narrating a short story the poet describes a highland girl her melancholy song and its impact on his mind the poem consists of four eight line stanzas the first sets the scene the second stanza offers two birds comparison the third wonders about the content and meaning of the song and the fourth describes the lasting effect of the song on the speaker the solitary reaper has a mixed rhyme scheme with the first and last stanzas more importantly the poem is written in iambic tetrameter so we should know all about iambic tetrameter it's a meter in poetry it refers to a line consisting of four iambic feet the word tetrameter simply means that there are four feet in the line iambic tetrameter is a line comprising four amps now some literary devices related to the poem the solitary reaper so first we should learn that what is mean by the term literary devices actually literary devices are the tools used by the writer to convey their emotions ideas and theme to make the matter more appealing to the readers William Wordsworth has also used some literary devices in this poem to make it appealing like hyperbole imagery metaphor and personification so we should also know all about that what is mean by imagery metaphor personification and hyperbole imagery imagery is visually descriptive figurative language used to appeal to our senses especially in a literary work metaphor this involves a comparison between two contradictory elements in the poem Birds first compares the girl singing to the song of the nightingale and cuckoo bird hyperbole hyperbole is a device used to exaggerate any statement for the sake of emphasis for example these lines 
Oh, listen for the well profound is overflowing with the sound. The poet William Wordsworth has also make a good use of personification. In this figure of his speech, poet attribute human qualities and feelings to lifeless subjects or he speak of abstract idea as if they were living presence. So in the last we have to conclude the poem. We may conclude the poem that Solitary Reaper has been the Madden song and it is a profound effect on the speaker. So much so that it remains in his heart long after he last heard it. This solitary Highland lass is most probably singing in Scott Gaelic which would account for the speakers not being able to understand her. But although the words of this song may be incomprehensible, the sad plaintive tone of the music is not. It speaks directly to the weary poet, providing him with spiritual refreshment. Even though the precise meaning of the song may never be known to him, it still connects with the speaker's soul as it partakes of what Wordsworth describes elsewhere as the still sad music of humanity. So, dear students, this is all about my today's lecture. I hope the students will avail the maximum benefits from my today's lecture. Thank you.